Stephanie Sprague joins us now from Princeton, New Jersey, with an assessment of the situation. Stephanie, on Thursday, we also saw Brazil raise interest rates by a full point, percentage point. What are you seeing today, and is this all linked to what's happening in Ukraine? This, this is partly linked to that. It's more than that, though. This has been a trend that has been building for the last year and a half or so with rising inflationary pressures, stresses on the supply chain, continued concerns that you're going to see higher prices and a higher cost of living for the average person in America and around the world. Now, the Federal Reserve made no secret early in the year it was going to have to reverse course and raise rates. Keep in mind, it was about two years ago that they took the move to slash rates by about 75 basis points in an emergency move. The Fed does not usually move in 50 basis points moves at a time. They don't move 75 basis points at a time unless it's, it's a bit of an emergency. They tend to move steady, steady as she goes. So it is really worried the market that certainly they're changing the course for tighter monetary policy, that they're going to be restraining in an attempt to rein in some of these inflationary pressures, which, as you say, is partially linked to Ukraine, but super, certainly superseded that. But they're concerned at the pace in which they're going. I mean, I've been watching the Fed for a while here for many years. They're very cautious. The Janet Yellen years, Jay Powell, her, her successor and her close colleague, these are temperate, moderate people. They've got their antennae out there picking up any quiver and shiver in the political financial world. And for them to move by 50 basis points and not 25 also sends a slight message to the market that they might really be behind here and they might have lost control with not just inflation, but also with growth. So it's big concerns here now on whether those higher costs that we're seeing at the pump for petrol, and I might note here that crude prices were actually up today. They weren't phased at all by this, this attempt to rein in growth. And... Um, you are also seeing the fact that wages could be moving up as a result of this. Either way, if wages move up, that's going to spur more inflation. If they start falling back, that's also a negative. So it's really seen here as though the Fed might be in a bit of a double bind and has really backed themselves in a corner. And how are you going to get out of this when rates are still historically so low? They're also trying to drain some liquidity out of the market as well. So we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average down over 3%. It is still holding above the year's low there. So that's maybe positive sign here. The Nasdaq Composite down 5%. And the S&P 500 down 3.6%. It's worth noting that all the stocks in the Dow Jones industrial average were down today, including Apple, Microsoft, and then you have Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan also down and now racking up double-digit losses for the year, which, again, is not a great sign for the economy in the financial system moving ahead. Right, Stephanie Sprague reporting on the markets and, of course, how it's affecting regular people. Thank you.